What is marriage? Today, it seems like the answer to that question is more important than ever. Now, this question can easily be answered biblically by reading and studying Genesis chapters 1 and 2. At this point, God has already finished creating the animals and everything else. But no suitable companion for Adam is found among all the living things that God had created. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verses 27 and 28 say, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. And in Genesis chapter 2, verses 23 and 24, it says, Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And who reminds us of this very thing in the New Testament? In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 4 through 6, Jesus said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. So in both the Old and the New Testaments, we are told that God made one man and one woman, designed for procreation, who were then told to procreate. We are told that God's design for marriage is one man and one woman, one husband and one wife. Now, based on what's happening in society today, it's important to bring up one of the most fundamental laws of logic known as the law of identity. The law of identity states that P is P. Something is what it is and not anything else. So the law of identity reminds us that man is man, in other words, male is male, woman is woman, in other words, female is female, and marriage is marriage, in other words, one man plus one woman is one man plus one woman. However, another way to explain and understand this is through causality. The four causes that philosophers talk about are the efficient cause, material cause, formal cause, and final cause. The efficient cause is by which something comes to be. The material cause is out of which something comes to be. The formal cause is of which something comes to be. And the final cause is for which something comes to be. So I'm going to break this down even more to help it make sense. The efficient cause, or what can also be called the agent cause, is that which actualizes a potential, or brings something into being, or in other words, gives it existence. The material cause is the underlying stuff or matter something is made out of. The formal cause is its function and structure related to its form. And the final cause is its end goal, or the ultimate purpose of a thing that directs it back to the efficient cause, or agent cause. So for example, let's talk about a tree. A tree has an efficient cause, a material cause, a formal cause, and a final cause. Its efficient cause, or agent cause, that makes it exist is God. Its material cause is the location of its particles, for example, wood, leaves, and even down to atomic particles. Its formal cause is treeness, because that exhibits its form. And its final cause is the end reason for which it exists. 
such as its function in the natural world, which ultimately points back to its efficient cause, which is God. So how about when it comes to marriage? Like everything else, marriage has an efficient cause, a material cause, a formal cause, and a final cause. Its efficient or agent cause that makes it exist is, again, God. Its material cause is location of its particles, which is human bodies. The formal cause of marriage is one man and one woman, because that exhibits its form. And its final cause, its end reason for which it exists, is fruition, procreation, and dominion, all of which ultimately point back to its efficient cause, which is God. So if someone asks you, is God's design for marriage one man plus one woman? The answer is yes. Hi friends, thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe down below and hit the bell icon so that you get notifications about all the new videos that are released. Also, for more information or to support our work, please visit our website, RadicalTruth.net. Also, to book us for your church or event, just email us at info at RadicalTruth.net. In the meantime, to watch another one of our videos, just click right here or right here, and we'll talk with you soon.